Henry VII ruled England from 1485 to 1509. He was the head of the Lancaster family, and he, he ended the War of the Roses by marrying Elizabeth of York. This united the two warring families under a new name, Tudor. Henry's diplomacy and sense of justice brought order and security to England. He established many treaties and policies that allowed England to prosper under his reign. Oops. <laughs> Henry successfully commanded the English army when he was only 16. As he grew older, he became a great soldier and politician. In 1415, he conquered the north of France at the Battle of Agincourt. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, Henry the Sixth! You're the shittiest, Henry. Uh, Henry the Sixth was the son of Henry the Fifth. He became king of England and France in 1422, before he was even one year old. When he grew up, it turned out that, unlike his father, he was a really shitty ruler. His weakness and madness led to a civil war in England. Way to go, Henry the Sixth! God, you suck. Okay, obviously it's not your armor because you suck. Yeah, look at Henry the Eighth, big pimpin, with his wives and his craziness, and his gratuitous sex on his Showtime series. Henry the Eighth ruled England from 1509 to 1547. In his quest to have a son who could inherit his throne, he got married a total total of six times. When the Pope didn't allow him to divorce his first wife, Henry VIII broke England's old ties with the Church of Rome and named himself supreme head of his own church, the Church of England. To be rid of two of his later wives, Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard, he had them beheaded at the Tower of London. Henry's surviving children all had the chance to wear the crown, the short-lived Edward VI, Mary I, and the great Elizabeth I. I was going to say, oh, at least Greaves isn't here, but man, I hate talking to Chief Warder Hargreaves. The armory here at the tower is filled with different kinds of cool suits of armors and neat weapons. Jake spends hours here drooling over the swords. Hmm. Let's see what we can find out about the Count's armor. Carson goes down to the club when he wants to drool over the swords. The tower's been the site of the royal armories for hundreds of years. Most of the suits of armor that we have here are older than your country, young miss. Why is everyone always shitting on America in this game? Armor's changed quite a great deal since the first thick leather greatcoats. Those protected the soldiers a bit against arrows and sword blows, but not very well. Your hat is stupid. So there. In the 1300s, Smiths learned to make coats of tightly meshed iron rings called mail. Now that was a charm. Mail was flexible, so you could move around, but strong enough to keep out arrows and even daggers. Wow, that would have been great. You could be safe inside your chain mail, even when people were shooting arrows at you. Yes, but soon axes and maces came in on the battlefield, and mail wasn't much good against their heavy blows. So armor is in the days of Henry V, around the year 1400, invented ways of making metal into hard protective plates. Yawn. They were molded into the blah 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 blah. Some of our most splendid were made for King Henry VIII in the early 1500s. Henry was a great big bully of a man. Fear Even when he was too old and ill to fight, he had his craftsmen at the Royal Armor Workshop make him marvelous new suits of armor. They had to be specially designed to fit his bulky frame. Okay, there's our answer. We don't need any more information. This armor is marked Renaissance armor. It's really fancy. Every piece is decorated with gold designs. But where's the shield? With armor like this, you wouldn't need a shield, Jennifer. Your armor shields your whole body. You'd want to keep your hands free to carry your sword. Some of the swords were so big you needed two hands to swing them. 
Oh, I'm getting a headache just doing the voice. The suits of armor seem kind of small. Were they made for kids? No, not these suits. These were for grown men, but people were a bit smaller in those days. They weren't as healthy, either. Mm-mm, syphilis. Hundreds of years ago, people weren't able to get fresh fruits and vegetables as readily as we do now. They didn't eat as well, so the average person didn't get as big as the average person now. And they didn't live as long, either. Didn't you just say that? Two places. Aunt Miranda says that exploring some castles might help us discover which king owned Count von Coburg's armor. Which one do you want to visit first? Man, we gotta be back for tea. I don't know if we have time to go to both of these. Hampton Court is only a few miles up the Thames River from London. It has a maze in the garden that has walls made with hedges. Neat. No. This looks more like a palace than a castle. The guidebook says that this is where Henry VIII lived. Let's hurry up and see if we can find any clues. We don't have much time if we want to get back to London before tea time. God damn it. Jennifer Carson, come to admire the palace. These paintings are by Antonio Verrio, an Italian painter hired by William the Third. Marvelous, aren't they? They're gorgeous, Mr. Friscura, but why do you stalk us? I thought we left you in the British Museum. Why are you here? I'm afraid that today we're more interested in Henry the Eighth. Where can we find out more information about him? Well, there's so much to tell. Do you have five hours? It's a piece of luck for you that I'm here doing some sketching. Henry the Eighth happens to be a favorite subject of mine. He was one of the most interesting of all the English kings. My favorite, really, though I suspect not one of the nicest. It's said that over 80,000 people were executed during his reign, including two of his own wives. He was a ruthless king, but what a fascinating character, and a man-slut. Did you know they credit him with inventing the game of tennis? He was a poet, too, and quite an excellent musician. But whenever I look at those Holbein portraits of him, I'm always struck by his haughty expression. Oh, what it must have been like to be the king in those days. The power, the wealth. Yeah, but no plumbing, Mr. Frescura. Holbein, we ran across that name, Carson, remember? Who is that, Mr. Frescura? Oh, Hans Holbein, a genius. He was Henry VIII's court painter. He painted wonderful portraits of the king and his family. He's considered one of the greatest artists of his period. All right, let's get out of here quick. <laughs>